What's going on everybody? So welcome back to another video. I know it's been a minute since I've last uploaded anything, but what I wanted to do is just quickly hop into a color grading tutorial on how to create a very natural, clean, cinematic look as seen in this clip here. So this was for a little commercial that I shot and I thought I'd just kind of walk you through the steps on how I achieved the look in this given clip. So let's hop on into DaVinci Resolve here. And first thing at first, I should mention that this is in the color managed timeline. So as per usual, go to the settings and then go to color management, DaVinci YRGB, and then timeline color space of DaVinci wide gamut slash intermediate, and then output color space of Rec 709 gamma 2.2. So once you have that all saved, uh, what we wanna do is we want to actually put this clip in a group just because for this instance, I was grading a number of different clips and I wanted to create a look development for all the clips. So how you do that is you go to your clips down here, right click, and then you go add into new group. So what I'm gonna just do is, yeah, I'm just gonna save it as YouTube tutorial one here. So once that's in a clip, then you can go up to the, these four dots here and you can alternate between group pre-clip, clip, and group post-clip. So the group pre-clip and group post-clip are gonna affect all of the clips that are in this given group. So first things first, what we wanna do is we wanna start with the group pre-clip. So I'm going to just go in here and add a color space transform. So we're gonna be converting this footage from our camera color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. So then what we're gonna do is I shot this on Sony, so I'm gonna do S Gamut 3 Cine as my input color space and then S Log 3 as my input gamma. Output color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut. Output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. And then my tone map, I'm gonna select for tone mapping, I'm gonna select luminance mapping, and then I'm gonna use a custom max input of 10,000 nits. So then what we wanna do is we wanna to go to our group post clip, and I'm just gonna copy this node, and then I'm gonna to go to my group post clip, and I'm gonna paste this on here. Obviously I gotta change the input color space because now it is working with DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, and put our input color space as DaVinci intermediate. And then we, what we want to do is put our output co color space to Rec 709. All right. So then we want to put our output gamma to gamma 2.2. And let's keep our luminance mapping the same here. So there we got our Rec 709 image. And what I want to do is I want to go back to my clip level because that's where I'm going to start things off. All right. So First things first, I wanna start in my exposure node. So I wanna bring the overall exposure of this image up ever so slightly. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use my HDR global wheel. This is a very like, photometric representation of exposure. And you can just use the slider here to adjust it as much as you need. So I'm just gonna bring it up about there, about 0.61. So I'm also gonna focus on the shadows a little bit here, and I'm gonna bring it down ever so slightly, negative 0 0.09. So before and after, it just brightens up the image a little bit, uh, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of open it up a little bit. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna hop on over to my saturation node. For this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the saturation node, and I'm gonna go down to color space. I'm gonna select HSV. And then what I'm gonna do is right click again. I'm just gonna have channel two selected. So let's uncheck channel one and let's uncheck channel three. And the reason why I'm doing that is because then it specifically just focuses on saturation and not hue or luminance. So with this node, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into our primary color wheels, and we're gonna be using the gain and gamma to adjust the saturation in the midtones and highlights. So I wanna bring this up a decent amount. So I'm gonna bring the gamma up, let's see. We're gonna bring this up to 0.1 here. And again, you just adjust it 
as best suits your image and the style you're going for. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the gain down a little bit to let's bring it down to about 0.8, I think. Yeah, 0 0.8. That looks good. So that just adds quite a bit of saturation to our image. It's funny, sometimes you think that the image looks good in Rec. 709, but then you add saturation in and it does a whole world of good to your image. So next what I want to do is I want to go to my white balance node. And for this, we're not going to be using the temperature and tint sliders here. Instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to our effects panel and we are going to use chromatic adaptation. So let's drag and drop that into our white balance node here. And, and so what we're going to do is for the illuminant type, we're going to select color temperature and same thing for the illuminant type for the target illum illuminant. So color temperature for both. And I shot this at 5600 Kelvin, so I'm just going to input that there. If you can't remember what you shot your clip at, just kind of try to estimate approximately. Obviously, you, it's better if you know the exact Kelvin that you shot your clip at, but you can play around with it and get a pretty good result. So then what I'm going to do, so obviously that makes it quite a bit cooler there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this value down. So we're just going to warm it up a little bit by bringing it down. Let's see. I think that's good here. I'm also going to add a little splash of green for the tint. Again, this is just my preference. You don't have to do it exactly like this. Just do whatever best suits your image. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to hop on over to our balance node. For this one, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to go down to our gamma and we're going to go all the way up to and select linear. It's cut off on my screen here that's recording, but select linear. And so then what we're going to do is we're just going to use our gain wheels to slightly adjust the balance in our image. And a little bit goes a long way, I find. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring, let's see, we're just going to play around with it a bit. Perfect. So that does the trick for me. So as you can see before, after, just adds a little bit more warmth to our image. Might have gone a little bit overboard with the cool tones and greens in our image. So we just brought that back a little bit. So we're going to leave our color adjustment and our windows nodes for now. We're going to hop on over to our post clip group here. So what we want to do is we want to create some serial nodes prior to the color space transform here. And with this section, what we're going to do is we're going to create our look for our image. All right. So for, with the first node here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually applying one of my looks that I've created in my endurance LUT pack. So these are available in the link if you want to check them out. So I'm going to use my LUT titled clean cut. Again, you can use whatever LUTs that you already have. You can create your own look. It's totally up to you. But for this instance, I wanted to speed it up. I'm using my LUT. So I'm going to go to the key and I'm going to decrease the key output gain by a decent amount. So let's bring this down. It's just a little too punchy for my liking. Let's leave it at that. So that just adds a decent amount of contrast. It also adds a little bit of split toning to the image, which kind of creates that dimensionality that we're looking for. So moving on to the next node, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly apply a simple glow effect. So let's just switch up our glow effect. Let's drag and drop it there. And I'm going to decrease the short, I'm going to decrease I'm going to, wow, that was tough to say. I'm going to decrease the shine threshold all the way. I'm going to decrease the spread all the way. And then to the composite type, I'm going to go soft light. And with the global blend, I want to bring this down to, let's see, I think about one, uh, I think about 0 0.124 there. So as you can see before and after, it just adds a little pop to the image, to the, to the brighter areas of our image. So moving on to our final node here in the group post clip. With this node, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more split toning to the image. Like I said, this is where you add a little bit more 
cool tones to your shadows and a little bit more warm tones to your highlights, just to add that separation to your image, make it have a little bit more dimensionality. So we're just gonna go to our custom curves tab here. I'm just gonna expand it to, just gonna expand it to make it a little bigger. Let's drag it back here. And for this, what I wanna do is I wanna unlink all of my curves. And we're gonna put an initial anchor point right about here for our neutral tones. We wanna to preserve the neutral tones with the split tone. We don't want it affecting our skin tones. So let's put an anchor point here and you can just hold option and click wherever you want on the curve and it'll basically anchor itself to the curve, to the line. So let's start with our shadows. Let's go to our blue curve. Let's add a control point here just to anchor it again, prevent it from going into our neutrals. And then let's grab another control point here and just push it up a little bit. I'm just gonna do it subtle for now. So let's leave it at that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the green curve. Again, I'm gonna do a control point here and I'm gonna push it up just a little bit less than the blue curve, just to kind of create that cyan look in our shadows. So next, we wanna add some warmth to our highlights. So let's hop on over to our red curve and let's put an anchor point up here. And I just want a tiny bit of warmth. A little bit goes a long way. Let's just bring it up a little bit more. And then let's also add a little bit of green to make it more on the yellow side rather than just red. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Again, this is one of those things that you can adjust as much as you want to get the desired look that you're wanting to achieve. But for this instance, let's leave it at that. So let's label our nodes. So I'm just gonna label this one as our split. So that's our split tone. This one's gonna be our glow. And this one is gonna be our look. Perfect, so let's hop on back to our clip level. And what we wanna do now is we wanna adjust some colors. So let's go on over to our vector scope. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure, first things first, that my skin tones are looking good. So they're not bad, actually. Yeah, as you can see, some parts are a little bit more yellow, but that's most of it is pretty balanced. As you can see, this is the skin tone indicator line. And you typically want your skin tones to land somewhere on that line. So we're in a pretty good realm right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just go to our color slice tab and I'm gonna go to the skin adjustment and I'm gonna adjust the hue ever so slightly towards the red side of things. Let's just grab the qualifier again. Yeah, so kind of pushes it more central there. I'm liking that, it's subtle. So what I wanna do then is go to my custom curves tab, go to my hue versus hue. And one thing that I really wanna do is I wanna make the red of the roses more red. So I'm just gonna use the qualifier tool to select the, the value that the roses fall into. As you can see, it falls into this area here. And so I wanna bring this down slightly until this strip here, which is representing the saturation of the roses is more towards the red side of things. So that's looking pretty good right there. So let's leave it at that. Then the next thing I wanna do is I want to make these stems of the roses less yellow and more on the green side of things. So let's focus on that here. I'm just gonna adjust it ever so slightly. So I'm gonna bring this down here and you wanna just make sure that this value down here in the hue rotation stays at zero for these anchor points. So let's shift this one ever so slightly too. Again, just zero that out. And then we'll just adjust this. That just makes it a little bit more green. It's subtle, but it adds a little bit more color contrast to the image. The yellow and kind of orangey red the, the yellowish tone of the stems and the orangey reddishness of the roses, we're just kind of 
blending together a little too much. So I want that color separation there. So that's looking pretty good. I'm actually really liking this image. So this is the log footage. This is the graded. And then the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over to this Windows compound Windows node. So this is where we're going to be doing our power windows. I just want to shape the viewer's attention to be focused more on the subject rather than the empty space over here. So what we're going to do is we are going to create some power windows and I'm going to use the gradient tool here. And I'm just going to do one first on the countertop and let's use the color wheels again. I'm just gonna bring the gamma down ever so slightly here. Let's see what that looks like before and after. Yeah, so that just darkens the countertop a little bit more, kind of bringing the viewer's attention up towards the subject. So then the next power window, what I'm gonna do is same thing. I'm gonna use a gradient adjustment again, but this time I'm gonna be going from the left side of the frame and basically just adding in some negative fill in post essentially. So again, using the gamma, I'm gonna be bringing that down quite a bit here. And again, your image is most likely a lot different. So just do with it as you see fit. Obviously you want to make these power windows natural. You want it to complement the light. You don't want to try to fight the way the light's going. So as you can see on my subject, the shadows are on the, I guess, right-hand side of her face. So obviously that's why I'm putting the power window on the right-hand side of her. I wouldn't put it on this side because this is where the, the light source is. So we want to be mindful of that whenever we're using power windows. All right, so that's all for this grade today. So this is the log format. This is the Rec. 709 version, and then this is our finished grade. Let me know what you thought. And again, feel free to check out my LUTs in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'm gonna try to post a little bit more regularly. So hopefully you'll see me on here more frequently, and this will be a more common occurrence. See you in the next video, bye.